Everybody, welcome to Social Media, What's in it for my organization. My name is Kyla Hunt, and I'm the facilitator today. I'm the program manager at TechSoup Global. We are Susan Chavez, also from TechSoup, and Jenny Hodgson from the Fund for Community Foundations. Also assisting with chat will be Alonzo Jennings, also from TechSoup. A little bit about what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to start off with Daniela from WINGS, who is going to be talking a little bit about who the WINGS organization is. If you don't know, WINGS is the organization that is sponsoring this webinar series. And I really look forward to having her introduce that in just a moment. Following that, we're going to have some poll questions um, just to kind of get a sense of what your organization is doing with social media. Then we're going to have Susan Chavez provide to social media. And then from the Global Fund for Community Foundation is going to talk about their social media efforts. And then finally, we are going to take a look at any questions that are coming in from participants. I'm going to read those out loud to our presenters today, and they will be able to answer those audibly. So, for all, I do want Daniela from Wings to go ahead and unmute herself so she can give us a little bit of an overview of who Wings is. Hello, everybody. Uh, Wings is a network of networks and philanthropy. We're the only truly global network representing broad community of brand makers, foundation, and philanthropy support organization. We are very happy to be here with you all. And TechSoup, our mission is to strengthen philanthropy and a culture of giving through learning, support, knowledge, knowledge sharing, and professional development. Um, you can know more about us in our website. The URL is over there, wingswet.org. Thank you all for being here again. Thank you, Daniela. I really appreciate that wonderful introduction. And thank you to Wings for allowing us to do this great webinar. So quickly, I do want to do a couple of polls that I would like everybody to answer. So first, I'm going to launch the first poll. Does your organization use social media? And so go ahead and take a moment to and look, things are coming in. Right now we have about 92% yes and 8% no. More, more seconds. We have voted, so I will give you about five more seconds to answer. So five, four, three, two, one. Close it. And it does look like 90% of representatives from the organizations on today use social media, and 10% do not. So that's an actually really interesting share simply because that means that a lot of you really want to know what more they can do with their social media. So that's great. So our second poll question is what kind of social media tool do you mostly use? Our options here are Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or other. And if it's an other, if you could type that what you do use, if that's not one of the options available, into the questions pane so I can take a look at what those are. Let's see if any of those are coming in. And if there is another social media outlet that you do use, go ahead and type that into the chat or questions pane. Eight percent have voted, so I do want to give you about five more seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. I'll go ahead and close that. A popular social media outlet that organizations here use is Facebook, um, which I don't think is incredibly surprising. Five, fifty-three percent who use Twitter, thirty-eight percent who use YouTube, and then 22% use another social media 
outlet. So what I'm really interested to see what that is. Let's take a look. Looks like some people are listening. WordPress is a social media outlet, which does make sense. Um, and then some German platforms have been listed. So that's really interesting. Does anybody here if wants to type into the chat or questions pane use LinkedIn? They could type that in anybody so that's really interesting okay so has said occasionally they do use LinkedIn so that's good to know so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that so thank you all for for answering those questions that's really really interesting data that our speakers can then speak to so I'm going to go ahead and give it over to our first presenter Susan who's going to give a little bit of an introduction into social media Susan, go ahead and take control and unmute yourself. Thanks. Okay. Uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening for all of you. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Great. Let's get started. So um, to see that so many of you are already using social media and just to give you sort of a better sense of what's going on in you know, profit, NGO sector, um, whatever term you might use in your community. So approximately nine out of 10 nonprofits are currently on Facebook, 50% are on Twitter, then are on LinkedIn, and 47% are on YouTube. And um, um, the latest 2011 nonprofit social networking benchmark report, we looked at a number of different types of uh, social good organizations in the arts, education, uh, philanthrop philanthropic groups. So it's a pretty um, diverse array of, of organizations that were pulled for, for this um, report. Next slide. Right, so you have already gotten started and, and you know, a first of you who haven't, um, a couple of so the first the first things first is just pick a few one or two reasonable goals, and it's very tempting when you get on social media to um, just want to use this for fundraising. You want to use this to uh, raise awareness of what your organization is doing, um, to recruit more board members, any number of of goals. But if you can do too many things, you're probably going to trip over your own feet. So try and keep it simple and proceed from there. So did exactly what you want to do. Uh, the next thing you really need to do is pick a um, channel or channels to use. Some channels are better certain things than others. For instance, if you're looking to get um, it on your organization's board, LinkedIn great place to do that sort of recruitment. Um, you want to generate, you know, just some cause awareness. Facebook is a really great place to do that, as, as is YouTube. So pick, pick what you can actually devote some time to. And once they're doing that, get and start having a conversation. Um, this is, I, th I think this is probably the biggest area where sort of uh, trip up when they're using social media that they get broadcasting and it is not about broadcasting. It's about having a conversation, trying to start a dialogue um, with the on online community. So this is the other part of it and this goes this is very much connected to having a conversation and starting a dialogue is don't be afraid to make mistakes because you will. Um, the, it's still going to happen. The idea behind social media is that we're being social. We're we're having a, a we're having a conversation, and just as you would in real life, you occasionally maybe slip up. And just as in real life, if you want to recover from that, you know, own up to your mistakes, be honest, have a sense of humor, and the. Um, your mistakes, 
the more likely that people will, will just as quickly move on as, as you would like them to. And there's, you know, there's a ton of of, of resources out on the internet in print about what is the right and the wrong way to um, approach each one of these channels. And there are definitely some guidelines, you know, some minimal guidelines that you want to abide by. You're going to find your own formula and community is different depending on what exactly your organization does. Um, your community is in real life, your online community will definitely you that to a certain extent. And you know, find a, a rhythm for yourself. You have to, you know, be real about what you the amount of energy and time that you can actually and again just find what works and you know don't worry if someone tells you that you're doing it wrong. As long as your community is happy to be doing. We're trying to build a community. So the first is be open. Um, you know, don't. It's very tempting to lapse into official organization speak. Use you know the bullet points that you might want that you might use in a press release or in some other formally written material. But it's it's not more. You have to go beyond that. And I think this is the part where folks definitely have a lot, have a hard time. They they don't think that what they have to say interesting enough is catch up. And if you're speaking to a community who supports your organization and what you do, you are already interested. And the com the content that you post doesn't necessarily have to be originally created. This is the wonderful thing about social media. Say you're on Twitter, you're um, a status update to share with your community. What you simply need to do is if you find somebody else, someone else that you follow in who's in a type of field, someone saying something interesting, you can retweet that. And that's, that's good. If you it's good enough to catch your attention, and that you can then turn around and um, share with your community. And going along with that, is answer questions, be transparent. Um, again, the conversation metaphor that you know you want to have this two-way dialogue with folks, and and the same you know we do this in our personal lives when we're having conversations. People will ask you, "Where are you from? Where did you grow up?" Um, you know, do you have what types, that sort of thing? Um, if folks ask you about your board structure, uh, how you fundraise, you know, don't 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 think that that might be an attack or um, they're trying to know too much. You know, as much as you can. You know, you don't need to give away all your trade secrets if you know you're dealing with community children or um, whose privacy needs to be guarded. Give as much away as you can, but not too much. And then for your community, ask them questions. It's a simple way to do it. And this is something that um, a lot of friends overlook. And I hope some of you are doing this on Facebook, but Facebook has um, a feature wherein you can actually, your organization page, you can put up a poll. You can put up a simple survey, and you know honestly, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't related. Sometimes it's just as simple as asking folks. You know, if you have a holiday coming up, you can simply ask folks, "What are you planning to do for the holiday?" Sometimes it can be a little bit informal, and be you know on message and kind of be serious and cost focused. It's amazing as asking folks what they did over the weekend uh, really get people to open up I mean the fact of the matter is is that as humans we like to talk about ourselves so well the opportunity to do that um, it creates and it opens up more opportunities for your community to um, talk to you engage with you 
to um, provide feedback. Let's say you're embarking on a new project within your organization and you want some ideas from your community. So these small little baby steps that you can take to open to uh, uh, larger engagement. it up. So is this thing on? This is the question that a lot of organizations ask once they get on social media. Is this really working? How do I know that this is working? The first thing you want to do is you want to monitor the conversation. Again, we're not broadcasting. The very, the obvious thing that you can do is if you post something on Facebook, monitor how many likes you have. Um, and the same goes for, for YouTube and LinkedIn. You can monitor how many likes you get to um, to post on Twitter, you can look at the number of retweets you get. But if you want to sort of take a more holistic approach to what the station is and, and what's being said, I would suggest using what's called social media dashboard. And these are tools that can show you um, everyone that you're following on social media. Um, you can track folks talk about your organization and wholly independent of, of what you um, when they're having the, the sort of the side conversations with their friends and, and their communities. Um, and you can even track keywords if you are with an organization that, um, you know, it, you can hunger a keyword and look for anybody who's talking about hunger and find opportunities to engage with a wider community. And you, know, you who kind of want to get started and look at dashboards, I'll, you know, I'll give you a couple of, uh, of suggestions. So uh, there's a really great, there's a couple of great dashboards. Um, one, and that's H-O-O-T-U-I-T-E, who we, uh, we use at is called co-tweet, O-T-W-E-E-T, as well as there is tweet deck, um, and really the, the top three, there's a, there's a couple others, but those are really great places to get started. I, I don't want to overwhelm you with um, too many suggestions, but, but go ahead and start on those. And if you just type social media dashboard into the um, engine, you'll you can get some more suggestions. And measurement is to use the built-in measurement tools that come with social media. Facebook has insights. Uh, you uh, can tell you how many views your videos have. But I mean, more than that, there's other things you can do. You can look at the number of website is getting from your various social media channels to see if people want to take that next step and, and learn about your organization. And a lot of times with social media, it's it's not it's so easy to just look at the numbers. You you want to look at other things. Um, you want to look at things as, as are you starting to see new types of donors coming in? Um, you're starting to get increase from individuals who maybe hadn't heard of your organization before um, wanting to know how they can get involved. There are simple ways that you can do this. Um, when you your organization for the first time, you can make sure you ask them over the telephone or via email a very simple, how did you hear about us? Again, this is another one of those things. There's no right or wrong way. I would just caution you not to be too beholden to numbers. Um, you know, a question that has a set of followers online might be fair better with social media than an organization that has a million. Because that organization with a smaller follower base might have individuals who are more likely to give more in donor dollars or other means of support than the organization that has a million, where you have who maybe to give, but they'll give retweet. Your, your strategy, your strategy is is going to change. So, 
um, as you're monitoring the conversation, as you are taking note of what folks are saying, as you're measuring and figuring out what the right um, to measure what you're doing is, remember you're going to have to probably come back to your strategy. You're going to find some things that probably aren't working, some things that might need a, you know, kind of sh a little and, you know, go and, and make and be flexible accordingly and, and Um, it would be incredibly tempting to actually say specific, give you some more specific tips about what to do with Facebook and, and Twitter and so forth. But if there's, well, that would take me probably a whole another hour to do so. So of these last three resources. So this one is um, first me slash TechSoup. Tech is all over the social web. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, LinkedIn, I mean, you name it. And instead of giving you every single one of the places you can reach out to us and ask questions and um, get in touch with resources on, on social media and technology, flavorsme.com, flavorsme slash TechSoup, and you will find links to um, every, any, every place that we are on the social web. Place that you would want to go to is TechSoup.org. A number of great articles um, in our in our blog about technology tools and social media. We also have announcements for upcoming um, webinars and online chats where you can learn more about different facets of social media and technology for social good organizations. Finally, um, if you really just kind of want to get your feet wet of um, wiki which is a great starting point for organizations that are um, just getting you no know, social media so that is that last address the NP not fit so 101 dot wikispaces dot com you can find um, resources about uh, YouTube LinkedIn blog, blogging uh, Facebook you name it we have those um, articles, links to other experts who um, have a great insight onto, into how nonprofits are using social media. You can even find uh, links to case studies about how nonprofits are using social media. And um, these will prove great starting points for you. Um, and I look forward to answering any questions you might have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate that. Let me look to see what questions have come in. I'm going to leave the control with you just while we're um, covering those questions. So just leave that slide up if you want to. Um, let's take a look. That I want to know more about how to use our organization's Facebook and Twitter accounts to promote the organization. Do you have any reading materials that you recommend? Oh, the reading materials. Um, I would suggest starting with um, this last slide that I have the, to learn more, the Social Media 101, MP Social Media 101.wikispaces.com. There is a lot of material there um, that, you, I, that I think will be incredibly helpful. Thank you so much. And it's all organized according to different social media channels. Okay, great. And just for everybody who's on, I did put that into that link and any of the links that Susan mentioned into the chat. So they should be able to um, click that hyperlink if they want to go ahead and take a look at that while the webinar is happening. Um, we did have a question originally about what LinkedIn is because I mentioned it. Um, and I gave a little explanation into that um, in the chat for the question, but I don't know, Susan, if you want to explain a little bit more about what LinkedIn is. Yes, uh, LinkedIn is a social, is a professional social network. It is um, a place where it's more oriented toward uh, finding jobs and ex and or expanding your professional uh, work network. It's a really great place for organizations to look for board members. I mean, I know TechSoup, we actually don't really use it for that. We, uh, we have a group, and that's a good thing. You can do um, a tech group 
group on LinkedIn and we have various discussions and promote resources um, regarding uh, technology and social media for nonprofits. Um, we do have a question that came in from Krista, which is interesting, saying that her headquarters is social media, but their country office does not. And so they would like to learn more about what their country office can do as opposed to just their headquarters. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, you know what, I you know, see that sometimes with organizations where, um, where the headquarters is a little bit, is a little bit hesitant um, to, to do that. Um, I think the best the best thing that you can do is honestly, from the perspective of, of, of you know one of the other offices in the field, is show them how the success that that you're having um, with using social media. Show them how it's you know ended up for you getting to know your community better. And um, sometimes it really is just sort of of leading by example, I did work with uh, I do work with a nonprofit, and it, it was a situation wherein um, the field were had started to embrace social media much more than um, headquarters did, and you know it really is just a matter of you have to make the case for it. Um, thing was that. Um, the marketing communications department was the department and headquarters that was sort of really and um, using social media, and they had to, they were they basically made a case that look, you know, the folks in the field are using it. Um, there's a lot of energy there, and some examples of what's going on with other similar organizations, and, and it was wonderful to make that case headquarters very, very uh, open to to go and we do have a lot more questions coming in um, I'm going to ask maybe one or two more before we hand it over to Jenny and then um, we will be handling a lot more of the questions after Jenny's section. I do want everybody to know that if for some reason we don't get to your question, um, I will be putting my email address into the chat box and so you can forward your question to me and I can forward it to the appropriate person. We will try to get to all the questions that are coming in. So um, We do have a question about what the term ROI means. ROI, sorry about that, I should have been more clear. ROI means return on investment, and so it's this idea that you want to make sure that whatever time and resources that you're putting into social media, you're getting back in, in some sort of manner. And then finally, before we give it to Jenny, um, I want to read one more question. Um, Nora asks, sorry, but we don't have a strategy. Can you talk about what that consists of? Well, this, this goes back to... Um, what your goal with social media and I you know I think this is unfortunately the thing that happens with technology is we get really excited um, there's a lot of buzz and then we we jump right in and think about where we're gonna go back and you know I'm it's exciting that you're already willing to get started but just think about what exactly it is that you want to accomplish and once you figured out what exactly it is you want to accomplish with Facebook or, or Twitter, then you can decide, um, um, does this happen? Should, do we need to post two times a day, three times a day? What type of content should we, should we be posting? Um, do we want to direct people to the content other organizations are creating? And you come up with some sort of, some sort of, of how you're going to go about doing that. Um, I know with some of the uh, one of the organizations I work with, we actually have a weekly meeting and in terms of our volunteer events and what volunteer events are coming up, you know, a month down the line, two months and three months, and we plan accordingly. Um, we're going to promote this volunteer event, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to write a blog post. We're going to remind people what day and time everything is. We can register, you know, um, 
a day on Twitter, and then we'll do maybe one announcement every other day on Facebook. So that hopefully that's enough um, of an idea of how you should sort of plan your your strategy. And um, since I go too into detail, I really suggest that you um, visit the uh, the Social Media 101 Wiki. There's a lot of um, amount of information about how to build a strategy and even social media guidelines for your organization. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was a really great introduction, Susan. Um, with that, I'm going to give control over to our second presenter, Jenny. So, go take control. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I'm just trying to, okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kyla. Well, I wish that I had heard Susan's um, presentation like a year ago, <laughs> because as you'll see, this has been a bit of a process as we've developed our social media activity. I wouldn't say it was quite a strategy, but I have found the process which started a year ago when we launched our website, and the guy who was working on it said, you need to be on Facebook, and you need to be on Twitter, and you need to be on LinkedIn, and so initially, it was just putting the there and some kind of page to where we are now, where I am still kind of exploring the, the opportunities for us. So without further ado, I'm going to do a few slides, and then I'm going to try and actually show you live our various pages so that you can see how this all fits together. So first and foremost, I should say that our use of social media within the Global Fund for Community Foundation isn't this kind of use. I, we are a, um, a grant-making institution that provides support to develop community foundations and other types of local foundations. So we're kind of an infrastructure organization. Some of our partners on the ground, however, and I'm thinking this is a picture from Egypt of the uh, Wakfed Al-Mahdi Community Foundation based in Cairo, very much use social media, Facebook, to actually get people out on the streets to go to events and things like that. We don't. I would say that our use of, Facebook, of social media is something more like this, which is about kind of connecting knowledge, building knowledge, and building up networks for a field which is still getting itself established. Local, um, local philanthropy institutions, community foundations, community philanthropy institutions, and still somewhat sort of invisible in terms of mainstream development. That's me with the glasses, by the way. So just quickly about the institution, um, uh, so that you have a sense of doing what and why. So we're a grassroots grant maker, and we make grants to support the development of community foundations and other types of local philanthropic institutions around the world. Um, we support and promote community philanthropy globally, so there's a sort of knowledge element. The rest, uh, what year are we in now? Since 2006, we've granted um, $26 million in grants to 143 partners in 46 countries. So if you ran maths on that, you'll see that we make quite small grants to quite small organizations. And I think that has some bearing on how we think about social media and giving um, profile to some institutions which maybe don't have access to kind of global platforms and how we can connect some of the dots. Um, we are very small, and this has really been kind of key in driving our thinking about web-based strategies and social media. We have two full-time staff, and on the program side, it's really me, and I work with a couple of consultants and uh, who work with our website and knowledge management. But we don't have somebody working on this, so I, our the implementation of what strategy we may have at the moment is a bit haphazard. When I have time, I do it, and I try to make it a priority. But I've also found it is highly addictive, knowing Facebook and Twitter and, uh, you know, I really have to kind of put a lid on it, otherwise I'd spend my entire life on it. Um, I think in thinking about social media, the sort of emphasis on knowledge management, of strengthening practice, raising the profile of community philanthropy, local foundations, that's probably when we started thinking more about the knowledge management piece and less just about the grant making part that the social media became even more important. So I'm thinking of the space, uh, and I, I guess this also 
is written to a number of the WINGS um, work members that you we are working in, um, we're not, many of us are not working in Western Europe or the United States where this garden which looks um, very beautiful, it's how I would, what I would call organized, organized philanthropy. So, you know, maybe in the US there are institutions that the kind of labor between different institutions about who they serve and do what and you know, institutions that work on family philanthropy and um, corporate philanthropy and all that kind of thing. Uh, and you see reflected in the social media, these are, you go to this organization for this type of output and this organization for another type of output. And I would say that the sector, that, the field that we work in as a global institution with a particular emphasis on the global south is called developing organized philanthropies. So there are, are fewer institutions and they kind of hang together more. So, you know, you may work with big local national foundations and tiny, tiny kind of grassroots institutions. And so, in a sense, uh, although it's less tidy perhaps, and there are certainly fewer service providers, I think there are more opportunities to connect dots and build constituencies. So, a quick word on the evolution of our social media strategy. So, up until about three years ago, uh, yeah, actually, no, 18 months ago, our website was managed by a third party. So if we wanted to enter, enter changes into our website, we'd have to send them to somebody and then if they had time, they would update them. And if there was a mistake, then you had to go back to them and say, before you make it go live, can you um, make this correction? Oh, and this has changed. And it was extremely cumbersome and it made it a very laborious process, as you can imagine. The other thing I would say is that that the main purpose of our website was really about our grant making, how to apply for grants, um, you know, what the uh, criteria were for the kind of grants we made, listing our grants, that kind of thing. Um, and we produced a bulletin again when we could, um, but it was a PDF bulletin. So again, it, it involved quite a lot of preparation. You had to have a deadline and your stories ready, and then I'd send it to our designer and he would make it look nice. Again, quite an onerous task. And at that time, I think I was driven by the many of our partners working in places with difficult web access, really hard to navigate the web and valued having um, hard copies of documents, you know, share with their board members and things like that. And I'm still um, not entirely sure whether how that is still the case. And I, I see how many of our partners who don't have own websites, but they do have book profiles that almost the, the Facebook offers um, a platform, a very professional looking platform to basically have your own website. So it's something that still is of concern to me, but we basically, we, we never do that, that PDF bulletin and I'll show you what we do instead. And now, I'll say that the main difference now in terms of our um, website strategy is that we have a content management system. Let me just move that in. Um, we have a content management system, which means that we can update the website as and when we want. Um, we use an e-bulletin, which I'm going to show you just now. Um, and we, rather than expecting everyone who reads our bulletin to read the entire thing from cover to cover, we are much more aware that if you post a, a post about Haiti, People interested in Haiti will read that. And it might be people interested in community foundations and Haiti. It might be just Haiti. It might be just community foundations. And so we tried to uh, be mindful of a kind of segmentation of our existing constituents and potential new constituents. Um, I would say that the key rationale in, in all our social media, and I should just say that actually we only use Twitter and Facebook, is aimed at increasing traffic to our to our website. Bringing that up. Okay. Um, thinking about social media, opportunities for an organization like mine opportunity for what I'm calling vertical networking and for constituency building. So although we are a tiny organization based in Johannesburg, South Africa, there are a sort of Dramatic element to Twitter and Facebook that your short link on Twitter is as you have the right to as many characters as does the largest institution funding out there. And I think that allows you 
to be able to sort of interact in ways that weren't possible before, rather than sitting outside the door of a large foundation hoping to be invited in, you kind of have this direct access. And I think in terms of, uh, Susan was talking about the sort of protocols around retweeting and following, that you can actually make yourself visible to many more constituents than you could, uh, than you could in, in the two types of networking, you know, having to pay to get to a conference, all those kinds of things. So it's, it's cheap and it's easy. And I think it helps small organizations to be able to punch above their weight because then your Facebook site, your Twitter site, they, they all look beautiful and professional. It doesn't say anything about how much you've spent investing in these sites or uh, to account for yourself in the same kind of, of way where you might just through your website. Thinking about a sort of hierarchy of information. I was thinking about this uh, when I was doing the slide yesterday. As I said earlier, our website really still focuses on our core mission. So we focus on community philanthropy, uh, our grantees, community foundations, women's funds, you name it. Our, the kinds of organizations that we fund, the kind of core work that we do that's in our mission statement is all on our website. Um, that we use Twitter and Facebook to kind of link into, to, to, to bridge with other agendas. And with Twitter, uh, I'm going to show you TweetDeck, which um, Susan mentioned in, in a minute. I think it really allows opportunities to, to follow different interests, whether you think there is some overlap. So, you know, linking to sort of research institutions, development agencies, um, so USAID, DFID, um, and that kind of networking for associations. So if you retweet something, you're, you're giving a position about it, you're saying, hey, let's think about that. And protocols, because this is still something I'm working out, the protocols on Twitter uh, about whether, tweet, whether you're meant to retweet or you go back to the original site and tweet that, and I guess I do a combination of the two, and I'm still trying to work out how this all works most effectively. Facebook. Um, I guess I use Facebook and um, I have quite a lot of friends on it and uh, I would use that we use Facebook an institution much more about working with friends friends of friends so many of our grantee partners are there we follow each other's um, sites some of my friends from my personal page I kind of you know know towards what we're doing that kind of thing and I would say that we use it as a much more soft networking tool um, what I don't makes me a bad social media person is that we I think we have quite because it's me doing it I have to say it's me uh, quite a sort of an instant interactive engagement so if I'm at a conference I don't say I'm at a conference I, I would prefer to go away think about it write some substance to go on our website and then link to it that way and I know that different organizations do it differently and this may change but that's where I am right now so now I'm going to um, okay, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the, uh, what it looks like for us. This is our current website, our current homepage, which tomorrow will change. We're, we're still in the process of, of um, uh, reaching it tomorrow, so this web, uh, webinar is perfectly timed. You'll see uh, here we've just got follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm not sure I've even checked to see if anyone's followed on LinkedIn because I don't, I just don't use it. But that's when we were thinking, okay, we should be there. Um, and you can see I've got it in edit mode, so you can see the user-generated content stuff. Uh, whereas edit widget that allows me to go in and and change all this to upload photographs, so there's no delay on that kind of thing. Um, on Facebook, we have, and I can remember, Kyla, what kind of page is this? Is this a fan page? Um, I believe okay. that uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to tell the difference between, because there's a group okay, and have, there's a page. I think that's a page. Yeah, no, it's a page. Okay, it's a page because we also have a group. So this is our page, and we've got 144 likes. We, for an institution that funds kind of philanthropic infrastructure, and we really haven't been very aggressive in looking for friends, I'm, I'm still quite pleased about that. You know, it kind of grows incrementally, and it's interesting to who follows and where from. Um, we also have a, um, a group which we're just getting going where people actually have to sign up. We have a group going on amongst some of our grantees. These photographs here are from a meeting 
on youth civic engagement that we held in Romania last year. And the members of this group belong to a group. And I have early mixed feelings about how much we as an institution or how much I as an individual want to use Facebook for kind of serious stuff. Because the way I use Facebook is to catch up with friends. And if I see serious stuff thrown there, sometimes it can be a bit heavy. So I, I know, I'm still thinking that one, one through. Then, um, I say our, the people who like us on Facebook and our Twitter constituency are entirely different. I think there's probably an overlap of 10 maximum. And we, on, Facebook, on Twitter, we've got um, about 90 or so followers, uh, which isn't a huge number. But um, again, it's just feeling around your constituency. And I'm just going to open tweet deck, it tweets, which is why I didn't have it open earlier. But what I find about Twitter for us is that there is some really good substance for people working in kind of civil society, philanthropy development that you just couldn't get access to before. And people working on things that you call something, they call it something else, but essentially it's the same. And so on TweetDeck, this is the way I kind of do my social media research instantly, is you can see these different columns. You can keep searches. So I've got philanthropy, community philanthropy, society, which is the big conversation in the UK about the role of civil society and the responsibility of governments. I've got community foundations. And here, this is where I find all my material. And I find affinities with organizations that I didn't really know of. I find really interesting pieces of uh, research. So it's not just about um, you know, retweeting. It's actually finding really excellent, high quality substance. And I know, I know that that's not the kind of the, the Twitter is that everyone's following, you know, Moore or uh, whoever with their kind of, you know, ridiculous sort of trivial comments. But if you're looking around a particular field, the amount of substance is huge. And I would also say for those uh, organizations who are based in the Global South, the tweet deck, you will see it is almost entirely dominated by institutions, particularly based in the US, Canada, the UK. And there's very little. Um, come out uh, around philanthropy, say, out of India or South Africa or wherever. And I think that's a real opportunity for institutions like mine and some of the WINGS members particularly to be sourcing a real data. We do a lot of, sort of case studies and things like that. And to put our little kind of angle in there and then see others treat it on and then people to contact you saying, well, you know, what, what are you doing there and how is that all going? So in terms of sort of filtering content and filtering topics, I, I find TweetDeck really, really extremely helpful. I'm going to go to my last um, two. I just wanted to show you quickly. This is how we do our new bulletin. I said earlier we did it on a, as a PDF before. And now this is an e-bulletin. And you can see I'm doing one that's going out tomorrow. And now on each of the stories, I can put a a like for Facebook. I haven't done it on that one yet, but each story or each uh, edition has a potential to be tweeted or liked on Facebook. And uh, I, some people do it from time to time, and others don't, and other people um, do things in different ways. But I think it's something that we have to be doing because the opportunity to put something on Facebook and for someone to read it and for it to matter is is really very huge. And so before I finish, I just want to show you our new home page, which is going to be launched tomorrow. Um, a few changes. We, we have now made it much simpler, so I only enter the data in one place. And so if I put a news item in under news here, it automatically comes up in this box. But what I want to show you was that we've now incorporated our Facebook and our Twitter feeds um, onto our website. Site, as a way of trying to connect our dots because we have different presences in, in Facebook and on Twitter and I think it's it's good to kind of bring all of those pieces together and sort of to show what you are uh, by association by linking up all these dots together. So as I said, I mean I'm still finding my way on all this and this may change again but this is where we are in our thinking and I, I just think a year ago I was quite skeptical about how we should be using Facebook or Twitter and 
Later on, I can see that actually I find it a really, really useful resource, not just for constituency building, but for my day-to-day -day work as well. So, Kyla, uh, that's me done. I'll hand <laughs> back to you now. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That was really great, Jenny. Um, so I'm going to take control back just really quick, and then we're going to see if what other questions have come in. So give me one moment. Okay. And just while I'm looking at other questions and reading them out loud, um, I did want to mention that the survey for this webinar is actually at an external link, um, and I will be sending this out in 